Step one, make sure to put both heat shrink tubes on your cables first. Remove the outer jacket of the cable you're going to splice into. Make sure you do not cut too deep to cut into the cables. Wow. Remove 4 inches of the insulation on the SO cord. Make sure that there is about 4 inches worth of ground wire left. Now, remove all the insulation on the ground wire back to the SO cord. Cut the other two cables about an inch long. Remove the insulation with wire strippers down to about a quarter inch. Now take your heat cable and score all the way around the cable about four inches from the end. Make sure not to cut too deep in order to miss the braid wire. Pull a hole in the braid wire in order to make a pull through area for the rest of the cable. Remember, do not remove the braid wire. About an inch from the braid wire, remove the outer coating of the inner jacket. Once the inner core has been exposed, leave one inch worth of inner core open. Cut a V-notch in the very end in order to help remove the bus wires from the inner core. With a sharp razor, whittle your way down to the bus wires on the outside edge of the inner core. Remember, do not cut the bus wires. Be careful. Once both sides of the bus wires have been exposed, use needle nose pliers to help pull the bus wires away from the inner core through the V-notch. Remove the remaining inner core that is no longer attached to the bus wires. Use the butt connectors to measure the depth that the bus wires should be cut to. With the appropriate sized crimpers for insulated butt connectors, crimp both connectors onto the heat cable. Attaching the SO cord into the heat cable is the next step. It does not matter which cable goes into which butt connector, as long as the ground is not connected. Make sure that all of the copper wires are within the butt connector. Now that they're connected, it is time to heat shrink the butt connectors. Make sure not to hold the heat on for too long. Once the butt connectors have completely cooled down, 
Wrap the mastic tape around the wires, making sure to weave in and out of the wires and also to fully protect all of the wires from any possible water or moisture. The next step is to insert the smaller heat shrink tube over the affected area. Make sure it is centered. While heat shrinking, make sure that you do not trap any air within the heat shrink tube. For this final step, we are going to connect the two ground wires, one the braid wire from the heat cable and the green wire from the SO cord. Insert them into the brass fitting and crimp it with your crimpers. Make sure they do not slide and they've got good connectivity between the wires. Remove any excess material outside of the crimp. For the last step, put on the very last heat shrink tube. Make sure it is centered over the affected area. Start in the center and work out in order to not trap any air. For the end seal, remove the outer jacket about an inch away from the edge. Remove all of the braid wire by cutting it all off. It is not needed. Cut a V-notch in the very end. With the V-notch, now wrap all the mastic tape around the end, ensuring that you go from the outer jacket all the way up to the V-notch, diapering through the V-notch. Make sure there's no chance the water can connect to the bus wires. Heat shrink the end seal and make sure to flatten the end with needle nose pliers. For any other questions about your heat tray system, call Heat Tray Specialists.